Welcome back to the third part of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where a delighted Eamon Holmes and Kay Burley have just walked away hugely pleased with themselves, as they should, having raised a fantastic £150,000 for Macmillan Cancer Support. Right now, though, time to welcome our next intrepid pair of celebrity fortune seekers. They're standing in the wings. I don't know whether watching these two has helped them or not. They are just a heartbeat away from heartbeat. Trisha Penrose and Jonathan Kerrigan. <laughs> Right, next up, playing tonight for the charity Cinnamon is actress Trisha Penrose. Trisha first found fame as Damon Grant's 14-year-old girlfriend in Brookside. But she's probably best known as bubbly barmaid Gina Ward in the long-running hit series Heartbeat. Trisha's always juggled her acting career with her passion for music. She has two pop singles to her name, and she just missed out on representing the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest in 2002. Hoping to raise money this evening for the Sheffield Children's Hospital is Trisha's fellow heartbeat heartthrob, Jonathan Kerrigan. Like Trisha, Jonathan started his acting career young. His first breakthrough came when he played Mick in Biker Grove. Since then, he's been in Casualty, Holby City and Mersey Beat, for which he composed the theme music. Then, of course, came Heartbeat. Right, Trisha and Jonathan are just 12 questions away from £1 million for their charities. If any of the 12 questions do arrest their progress, they still have those three ever-faithful lifelines to kind of bail them out. They can go 50-50, they can phone a friend, or they can ask this audience right. Let's get started, because I can tell you, Trisha is absolutely petrified. Let's play. <laughs> Who wants to be a millionaire? Right, two questions, two right answers. You're guaranteed to go back with at least £1,000. Question number one is for 500 quid. According to a traditional rhyme, the appearance of two of which type of bird is set to bring joy? Sparrow, wren, magpie, dove. Well, I think, we, I think we know that one. I think we were both <laughs> pleased when Magpie came up. <laughs> um, do you want to say it? Yes. Oh, go on, let's show off. Go on. Yeah, can I show off and say because yeah, I know this one? It's the only one we'll get right. Go it's on. Magpie Chris. It's the right answer, you have yeah. £500. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's better now. <laughs> How do you know that? What's the rest of the rhyme? Uh, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy. Right, good work. I think the extra points. Yes. Just, <laughs> not really. Right, question number two. Last point at which you could go home with nothing at all. Uh, I'm sure it won't happen. Be positive. You have all three lifelines to help you if you even need them. Question number two, then, now, would guarantee you £1,000 straight away. Have a look at it. Here it comes. Who replaced Des Lynam as host of Count... Look at you. As host of Countdown. <laughs> You're so pleased with yourself. What do you want to see come up on the screen? What name? Just let it come up first. <laughs> yeah. Stephen Fry. <laughs> Giles Brandreth, Michael Aspel, Des O'Connor. Again, would you like to uh, say this one? Yeah, it's definitely Des. The lovely Des. It's the right answer. You have yes. £1,000. <laughs> you know when you did Fame Academy? Yes. That was very brave. I enjoyed it then. And you got beaten by Tara. I know. She deserved to win, though. She was the best. You're bound to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. I enjoyed doing that. Jonathan, if you weren't in Heartbeat, you'd rather you'd rather actually be making music. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just seems like I, I, I fortunately, as you as you mentioned, did the uh, theme tune to Mersey Beat. So I've got this little company, and we do um, we do uh, incidental music, films, television, things like that. And uh, it's always been a hobby, but to be able to now do it and call it, you know, if, if you had your occupation on your passport still, I could say actor and musician. OK. Now, listen, I want to talk to you about your charities in a bit. Let's have a try and get you a little bit farther up, though, first. You've got a 1,000 guaranteed, which is, which is great, OK? Question number three is for £2,000. The good thing is you still have not touched any of your lifelines. This is for 2000 Have a look. Mark Philippoussis <laughs> is a famous name in which sport? Golf. Football. Snooker. Tennis. Oh dear, I am hopeless Jonathan. at sports. Well, the only reason I laughed is, is because I know nothing about sport. <laughs> <laughs> and I you thought, did? No. <laughs> I thought you were good at sports. That sport. was the other phone a friend. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no um, I know nothing about sport. Um, 
But this one, I know his name. I know the name. Mark Philippoussis. Philippoussis. And ridiculous. Do you have any idea? It's not a footballer, is it? Mm, We'd know no. that. No. It was a footballer. I don't think so. I, Golfer. I, I think he's a. I, I'm pretty sure. Tennis. He's a tennis player. I'd say tennis, but I don't. He's not a golfer, I'm sure of that. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, footballer, mm. he's not a footballer. No. I think he's a tennis player. I do as well. Yeah? But are we definitely sure about this? Uh, I'm sort of 85%. I think I might be Swinging to 30%. Guessing. Swinging. Should we, what should we do? Do you want to ask He's a tennis player. Yeah, I think so as well. Go with your first, with your instinct. Well, I, I thought tennis. He's a tennis player. You, you thought tennis. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> Final answer. Final answer? You say it. Uh, Mark Philippoussis is a, um, is a tennis player. Great. Yeah. Tennis. I think you knew nothing about sport. I don't. And she knows nothing about sport. She doesn't. So why didn't you use a lifeline? Oh, my God. Don't. I don't know. We should have done, shouldn't we? No, you just won 2,000... Oh! oh! Trish, um, what is Cinnamon? Cinnamon Trust? Cinnamon is Trust it? is a charity for the elderly and the pets. And they will go and help out the elderly, walk the dogs. They can't get out to walk them. And if the elderly person passes away, they'll take the dog, the pet, on board. Jonathan, uh, Sheffield Children's Hospital for you. Why, why that particular kids' hospital? Yeah, well, well, recently my niece, Emma, she, she went there for an operation. She had a bit of a spinal cord um, attached to the vertebra, which is had been there since birth, so she's been in a lot of pain. But um, when she was there, she just she was looked after so well. Uh, I went to visit her, and you know you could just see that a very sort of nervous child was uh, taken care of superbly. So I think you know the Great Ormond Street uh, Hospital guys, hospital people know of these other children's hospitals, but uh, Sheffield, I suppose, is a lesser known one, and they deal with 180,000. Patients, children a year, so it'd be nice to nice to give them something. That's great to, to be able to give something back. Mm. Well, uh, you've got two thousand pounds between you at the moment. Uh, you've got a thousand guarantee. You've got all three lifelines untouched. Question number four. See, it shoots up very fast these days. Question number four is for five thousand pounds. Have a look. Tell me what you want to do. <clears throat> Which rap artist released the Slim Shady LP in 1999? LL Cool J. Shaggy, Dr. Dre, Eminem. Yeah, it's Eminem. Thank you. Eminem, do we think? Yeah. Eminem. He is the real Slim Shady. He had five thousand pounds. <laughs> you told me once you're a massive Who Wants to Be a Millionaire fan. I am, Chris. Do you I do what you're gonna do the old I always do better at home thing, aren't you? I do do better at home. And you've done all right tonight. You've done okay. We've done all right. We've done all right, yeah. But no, I, I'm a big fan of Do you that. shout? I shout at the telly. Do you scream? It's scream a. Abuse. No, it's a B. No, I guess half the time. Half the time I'm right though. Yeah. Like I used to do at school, the exams, A, B, C or D. Well listen, you've got five thousand pounds. It's great. Happy. Okay, you have five thousand pounds. You have all three lifelines untouched. Question number five is for ten thousand. Have a look. Tell us if you want to play. Whitby and Scarborough are situated on the edge of which national park? We should do. We should do. <laughs> Snowdonia, North York Moors, Peak District, Exmoor. Now. We should know this, shouldn't we? <coughs> this is where we, we film Whitby and Scarborough, so. <clears throat> Well, yeah. uh, it, the obvious one's there, isn't it? Um, obviously the North Yorkshire Moors. North Yorkshire Moors, yeah, that's where we've spent most of our... Uh, Lives. ...past three years. <laughs> oh, you, you 15. <laughs> 15. There you go. So, um, yeah, we, we should be pretty confident with that one, I think. <clears throat> yeah. North not, Yorkshire Moors? Well, is not it... Not Peak District? It might not be. Uh, is, it, is it one oh, of those funny ones? Do you know what I mean? I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It, stands not... at, it stands out as the North Yorkshire Moors, cos that's saying. where we used to film in. Yeah. But it could be one of those... Uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's a national park, isn't it? North Yorkshire Moors. Yeah. We've seen the the big round stones that say that. 
We sure have. Yeah. Um, Snowdonia's Wales, isn't it? Yeah. Exmoor's Cornwall ish. Where's the Peak District? <laughs> ish. Yeah. Um, and the Peak District, no, it's too far away. It's North Yorkshire Moors? It's got to be the North Yorkshire Moors, got to be. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell them? Yeah. North Yorkshire Moors. We agree. Fine, lads. Yeah. Yeah. You just won £10,000. <laughs> Have a look at question number six. This is for £20,000. Here it comes. What nationality is the fashion designer Donna Karen? French, Australian, American, Russian. Oh dear, I've got a few of her uh, bits in my wardrobe. <laughs> Where do they come from? <sighs> Does any of those look. Donna Karen, familiar? New York, in it? Um, no. Yeah, Donna Karen, New, New York. No. Is that just her collection? Or is that mm, just a New Donna York Karen, thing? New York, yeah. Um, I'd say, God, I'd say Australian, but I don't know, I'd just be guessing. Well, that's bizarre. I thought Australian. Donna Karen. She's not Russian, is she? I don't think she's Russian, no. Um, she's probably American or Australian. I'd say American or Australian. I know what you mean about Australian, but Donna Karen, New York. Mm. Is that a collection? Could be. Um, what do you think we should do? Uh, I think we have to use a lifeline. We, I think we should use a lifeline, yeah. Shall we go for the, ask the audience? I think we'd like to ask the audience, please. Chris. Okay, right, audience. First lifeline they've needed. It's worth a serious amount of money. It's worth £20,000. This is the question. What nationality is the fashion designer Donna Karen? Now, A on your keypads is French. B, Australian. C, American. D, Russian. All vote now. American. 76% wow. say American. Only 14% wow. say Australian. 6% think she's Russian. 4% think she's French. It's pretty high. That's 76%. a sizable amount, isn't it? It's pretty high. 76%. Good. And it's a huge majority, isn't it? It is. OK, well, yeah, we'll go for American, please, Final. Chris. Final Final answer? Answer? Yes, yeah. Final Final answer. Answer. Just look at me. Can we say a huge yes. thank you to thank the audience you. there? Now, serious business, guys. This is very serious. This could be a huge amount of money. You've got £20,000. Question number seven is worth £50,000. If you go for it, you do not have to. If you go for it and give me the right answer, you get a guaranteed minimum tonight of £50,000. You've got to phone a friend, and you've got a 50-50 to help you get there. Have a look at it. This is question number seven of 12. It's worth a guaranteed fifty grand for the right answer. Here it comes. Which cartoonist created the Fosdyke saga? Bill Tidy. Ralph Steadman, Carl Giles, Reg Smythe. Not a clue. What? Um, <clears throat> um, Do you know any cartoonists? Well, Bill Tidy is a cartoonist. Giles is a cartoonist. I think they're all cartoonists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> We're doing well, aren't we? That's helped. Yeah. That's helped. <laughs> so we've narrowed it down to four. Yeah. <laughs> Right, which one of the four? I've honestly not got a clue on this uh, one. So. I, I'm sort of thinking along Bill Tidy, but I don't know why. What do you want to do then? Um, it's either 50-50 or call a friend, isn't it? Right, we're 50-50, we're still not going to know it, are we? We're not. Um, we're going to have to phone someone. Yeah. Who are we going to phone? Phil? Uh, let's phone Phil then, shall we? Let's phone Phil. Who's Phil? His wife went to university with my girlfriend, um, so we're good friends. OK, we'll phone him. You can talk to him? I will, yeah. Okay. Do you want right. to talk to him? Yeah, you talk yeah. to him. Uh, OK, general <clears throat> question, four possible answers. It's worth £50,000. I will warn you, if you go for it and give me a wrong answer, you lose 19 of the £20,000 you've got this month. Hello? Phil? Hi. Hi, it's Chris Tarrant here. Good evening. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Oh, hello. How are you? 
Not if I had, not if I had. Now, well, now I've got Jonathan and Tricia playing here on Millionaire for... They're playing for £50,000 at this moment. They were doing rather well and they got stuck. Right, OK. But uh, John reckons you'll probably know this. Well, hopefully. We'll see. Uh, I mean, so, it's, so it's serious money. It's for £50,000. Yep. Next voice yep. here will be Jonathan's. He will tell you the question. There are still four possible answers. One of them is worth fifty thousand. All right, mate. Mm, great, thanks. Okay, right, Jonathan. Fingers crossed. You've got thirty seconds. Your time starts now. All right, mate. Uh, which cartoonist created the Fosdyke saga? Was it Bill Tidy, Ralph Steadman, Carl Giles, or Reg Smythe? Which oh. cartoonist created the Fosdyke saga? Twenty seconds. I would have said either the first, last one, Bill Smythe, or. Reg Smythe. Uh, Bill Tidy or the Smythe, but I couldn't be sure, mate. Have you got any percentage of uh, how sure you are, Bill Tidy or Reg Smythe? No, not really. I, I just basically have taken a, taken a show. I think I'm, I'm, it rings a bell. Oh, thanks, mate. That's, it's a no worries. Thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. It's a tricky he one, isn't it? He said Bill Tidy, though. Well, yeah. He said. We've got a lot to lose, though, haven't we? We've got a lot to lose. We may as well 50 50 it while we're here, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, let's 50 50, yeah. eh? Could be 50-50, please, anyway. It can. Computers take away two random wrong answers. Leave Jonathan and Trisha the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. Oh! No. <laughs> what did he mostly say, Reg Smythe? Phil said he's either Reg Smythe or Bill Tidy. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I think it was a shot in the dark there as well with him. Right, come on, we've got to make a decision. Right. right. What are we doing? You, you, you go with it. You, you say what you want to do. Because I, I want to gamble, but it's not good. I want to gamble, Bill Tidy. Let's gamble. Yeah. <gasps> oh, no, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, come on. Yeah? I've oh, got Final answer. Yeah, that's it. I'm so sorry if we've lost the yeah, money. Yeah, go on, I'm, then. So I'm sorry. sorry. We're only down to two, and uh, we're very sorry, but we could get a lot of money here. What are we doing? What are we doing? Final gamble. answer. Right, we just got to, yeah. Gamble. We're, we're going to gamble on Bill Tidy, I think, please. Oh, my... Oh, no. <laughs> it's a long, it is. You had £20,000 and you yeah. knew you would lose nineteen grand if you gave me a wrong answer. Oh. You've just won £50,000. <laughs> So sorry for the delay. Sorry. sorry. For the delay. Oh, my it. heart is in my mouth. Fifty thousand pounds. Wow. Oh, they'll be happy with us now. That is so good with you. <laughs> they'll be happy. That is so worth it. I'll tell you what. However you got there, have a look. This is what you've done. This is the minimum amount you will leave here with. Fifty thousand pounds. You want to take it, Trish? Take it. Go on. Take it. Yeah. You share it between you. Right. So you have fifty thousand pounds. That's guaranteed. Watch my lips. You have fifty thousand pounds. That's guaranteed. Next one is for £75,000. You might as well play this. You have no lifelines. You cannot lose on this question. Yeah. Here it comes. Who wrote the script for the 1981 film The French Lieutenant's Woman? Tom Stoppard, Harold Pinter, Alan Akebourne, Willie Russell. We should really know this, shouldn't <clears> we? I don't, th I don't think he's Alan Akebourne. No. He's... No, he's sort I... of lighter than that, I think. It's not Willie Russell, is it? I don't think it's Willie Russell. Tom Stoppard or Harold Pinter. Yeah. It's one um, of Harold Pinter is one that I would... I was thinking... When it came up, that was the only one that jumped out at me. We've got nothing to lose, We've got which is brilliant. nothing to lose, have we? So, um, and you're favouring Harold? Uh, I'm favouring... <laughs> I am favouring Pinter, yeah. Well, then, let's go with it, then. We've got nothing to lose, as you say. I think I think Harold Pinter. Right, let's go with it. I think it. Harold Pinter, yes. Harold Pinter. Harold Pinter. Yeah. Final answer. We've got no to lose. Final answer. No to lose. No. Final answer. Give me that check. Uh, oh. Give me the check. Come on, Trish. Thank you. I'll put it there. I'm going to replace it with one for £75,000. Take it, go on. I don't know what you two have got. You want to bottle it, whatever it is. This is great. It's great here. We love it here. We love this. We're so lucky. Right. 
Wow. Somehow, and I've no wow. idea, somehow you have £75,000. I don't know. You are one away from what the triumphant Kay and Eamon won, £150,000. Have a look at it. Question number nine is for £150,000. Who was the founder of King's College, Cambridge? Richard II, Henry VI, Edward III, William I. I wish I concentrated at school. King's College. No idea. <laughs> Do you think you know it? Uh, no. <laughs> How's that? I mean, we, we're set to, to win 75,000 here, but... But we're going to lose 25,000. Yeah, it's too much to lose. <clears throat> I don't think we should gamble. No, I don't. 25, 75,000. Yeah. 75 grand is amazing. Yeah, I was hoping the longer we stayed at this... What would you say, out, though? What would you say if you were going to say? Uh, do you know what? I, if, you, if you ask... Um, Edward III, I'd say, but... Um, I'd have probably said Henry VI, but... I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't think we should. I don't not think gamble should, no. with Let's not entertain yeah. it. Let's. We've had a fantastic night. We've had a fantastic night. time. Seventy-five thousand pounds. Take the seventy-five thousand. I, I, I think. I think we should go. Yeah. Yeah. I well, do. Well, well yeah. done, Lance. Well done. Yeah. Give a big hand. They go away with seventy-five thousand pounds. <laughs> and I know you couldn't care less, actually, but I will tell you. If you said Edward the Third. You'd have been wrong. If you'd have said Henry the Sixth, you'd have been right. <gasps> oh no! You would have won one hundred and fifty thousand. Oh 000. no! Brian Connolly's back, putting our lives in order. Actually, no, that makes him sound like Jeremy Kyle, doesn't it? I just meant he's putting stuff out on his timeline tonight at ten.